Hey groups, uh, so good to see you guys today. I want to do a quick uh, summary of this past weekend for the teaching. Uh, we looked at what it means uh, to have pride and to have envy and this issue in our culture right now where we look at envy um, and it's more than just jealousy, right? Envy is that next step above where we say, I see what you have, I want to have it, and I don't want you to have it. Right? We look at James and James 3 specifically and see how that pride and that envy is actually one of the things that pulls us away from wisdom. And we are called to, James is very clear in this, we're called to look at the character of um, the people who are giving us insight and instruction and see if they are prideful. Are they boasting? Are they envious? And we need to remove ourselves from some of those situations. Uh, We look specifically at the story of Naaman um, in 2 Kings and how he was a very prideful man, but he responded at the end of the story um, and was teachable, right? And we need to have this posture of being someone who is teachable, taking a step back and allowing people to speak wisdom into our lives. I think all over the place, we have advice, insight, and instruction uh, being thrown at us, but we need to do a little bit of work, right? We need to consider the source. Are the people that are giving us those things wise? Do they show those characteristics where they're not proud and they're not boastful and they're not envious? And Not only that, but are we listening to that and actually taking that and responding? That is what this whole teaching has been about this weekend is responding to that insight, that wisdom, that wisdom that comes from that insight, not just any advice, right? Responding to the right insight. Um, I'm excited for these group's questions today, and I hope that you're able to have some conversations that are life-giving. Uh, kids, there's a few questions that are on the bottom of the sheet. Leaders, why don't you walk the kids through those, have some fun discussions with each other, and then adults, we're going to w- rock through some of the next questions. All right, question number one. What kind of challenges or struggles um, did you have from last week about not making empty promises? Uh, This honestly has been one that's super hard for me. I say yes to a lot of things. I'm like, yes, I'd love to do that. And then realize I can't actually do that or I don't have the time to do that. And this one for me has really, really changed my perspective of the things that I promise because I think we need to realize that when we promise things and then don't follow through on them, our character, our character comes down, right? The way we're viewed uh, comes down. So did you have some struggles with that? How did that, how did that topic go for you this past week? Question number two, I want you to read James 3, 13 through 16, and then talk about these questions uh, together. First one is this, what is the difference between godly and earthly wisdom, between godly and earthly wisdom? And we have talked about what it means to be wise throughout this series. How do you search for wisdom? How are you currently searching for wisdom? Number three, maybe you've heard this phrase in the dating world, be the person you're looking for is looking for. Think specifically about how that applies to wisdom, right? Here's the question. What might be lacking in your character for people to come to you for godly wisdom? Question number four, I want you to read Proverbs 13, verse 10, and then ask these questions. When has pride been an issue in your life? 
Are there times that you struggle with pride right now? And why might that be? Question number five, what are obvious signs of pride? How can you spot those things quickly? And then are there sneaky ways that pride seems to hide underneath and may not be noticeable right away, but if you do some digging, it's there. Think about the obvious and the not so obvious signs of pride. Number six, think back to the story of Naaman. Right in the beginning, he was super prideful. He didn't take advice, um, but the end, he listened to what his servants were speaking into his life and he responded right away and he was teachable. Question in this is, when has there been a time when you heard advice and decided not to take it? Was it wise advice? And why didn't you take it? And the second is this, what areas of your life could you have a posture of being more teachable? Maybe that's in your house, with your family, at work. Uh, where could you be more teachable? All right, the challenge for this week is for you to put down your pride. Just put it down, lay it down, and don't ever pick it back up, right? Don't boast about the good things that you do. Don't, don't allow yourself to get big-headed about the accomplishments that you have. Put that aside and replace it with being teachable. Um, that is the challenge for this week. If you guys have time and want to dive a little bit deeper, you can flip to the backside of that paper um, and look at the digging deeper section for this week. We look at a story, um, it's actually a parable that Jesus tells in the New Testament about two characters, a Pharisee and a tax collector, and they have very different postures. Um, one has some very strong pride that he's dealing with. Um, check that story out if you got some time. There's some questions to follow up. Otherwise, groups, I hope you guys have a great week. Can't believe we're already into November. I hope you have an awesome fall, and we will talk to you guys soon. Over the last few weeks, um, the last two weeks, we've talked about international missions with Kristen. Um, and I'm so excited to see how uh, we as a group community can get more involved with international missions. And I hope you guys were able to have some conversations about maybe what would it look like for your group to go on a mission trip together uh, internationally. Um, I think there are some really cool opportunities there. So I um, be praying and thinking about if that is a good option for you guys. Uh, but we also wanted to give you um, some information about what we have missionally locally, uh, some of the options out there. So Kristen, uh, can you kind of tell us what we have, uh, what the Foundry is supporting as far as local missions? For sure. Yes, we do have right now two local missions that we do support on a regular basis. One of those is Doors of Hope. Um, they help out people who are just kind of in a tough situation and allow them to get the help that they need in various areas. Areas. We also support Upward Bound Ministries, which a lot of you know probably is Zero Gravity. That's the elementary program. But there's also one way, which is the middle school Bible study that they're able to do. We also have a couple other missions that we support um, on one-time basis. We do Harvest Hand Ministries with our micro pantry right outside of our church. And also, um, I know groups right now are in a competition to get um, some Thanksgiving meal baskets for yes. Harvest Hand Ministries.
Ministries. Excited to see that. Um, we have Hand to Hand, which we've learned about before. And um, we also have um, one other one, and it is Compassionate Heart. For those of you that come on a Monday night, Compassionate Heart, we do have volunteers from Compassionate Heart that are come and help us out in our Monday night services. Absolutely. So how can groups specifically get involved in some of these things? For sure. There's lots of different ways and for definitely reach out to you yeah. um, at the end of this, but just some highlights. Um, we do need some snack packs for hand to hand. If you are willing with your group to put together some snack packs once a week, those kids take those home. Yeah. Um, we do have our Thanksgiving meal basket. Um, hopefully I'm seeing right now that yes. the biggest one is 10. Curious if any groups can get above yeah. that. And um, we do have some individual needs also for Zero Gravity and Upward Bound Ministries, anything from breakfast for the Bible study and snacks to people actually going in and volunteering and helping out with the kids. Absolutely. Um, so there's so many opportunities, just way too many to list right now. Absolutely. And I'd love to be able to connect up with you guys on ways that you guys can get involved. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of great opportunities um, locally here. Uh, I, I'm really excited about Doors of Hope yes. because that gives us way more options than we had in the past. Um, there's people who need help fixing a deck. So if you got a group who um, the guys want to work with their hands and do some of those things, I, as you can see, don't <laughs> do that very much. I don't know how to work on a deck, but we need people who do. Yeah. Um, so whether it's from doing snack packs with your whole group and incorporating the kids or rebuilding a deck or helping on a roof, um, or helping with these, these Thanksgiving baskets. There, there are so many options. So I, w I really want to challenge our groups to live into this local mission, these opportunities. So if there's something that rang true in your ears, um, have a conversation with your group right now about what it means for your group to serve together. Uh, because we do want to challenge our groups into this next scene season as not only having conversations about the Word of God and how to challenge each other, but to live into the mission of what God has called us to do. And we believe that is with serving together. So, so excited to hear what you guys are doing. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me at matt.kuman at foundrychurch.net. Um, and me and Kristen will be in touch about what that looks like uh, to serve together in our group. So, so excited to see where these opportunities go.